God of grace and God of glory, on your people for your power. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour. Welcome to worship uh, on this day of Pentecost. Um, as we, uh, um, we uh, remember the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the church, and we call upon that Spirit of God, that Spirit of power, uh, that Spirit of love, as um, we are joined together in worship. Um, a couple of things, um, let's see here. All right, how's that? I want to make sure I have my sound here today. This is one of the joys of going live. <laughs> um, I will talk uh, as loud as I can, uh, just to make sure, and I'm hoping my, my battery isn't dead. Uh, that's one of the things that I didn't check here before, but hopefully you can hear me. Um, I want to share a few announcements. Um, uh, one is that today would have been uh, graduation day, uh, at least here in Cedarburg and for uh, high schools kind of around, uh, around our country. We uh, are going to be remembering our graduates and, uh, and recognizing them at our forum today um, at 1030. And there's a link on Faith Families, um, and so uh, you can join us for that. Um, our graduates are, we're hopefully going to have all of them on the call, and uh, it's a chance to offer our blessing uh, and words of encouragement uh, to them. Also, um, just need to acknowledge uh, all that is happening in our nation right now. Um, and. Uh, uh, there uh, have been many of you who have shared about family members who live in the Twin Cities and who are being affected by the violence that is happening there. Um, that uh, also is the neighborhood where my, my father and aunt uh, grew up, um, and so that's a neighborhood that I know uh, well. Uh, and we remember um, the people of Minneapolis and the people of, of our nation uh, in cities all over our nation who are experiencing um, uh, violence. And especially, we remember um, George Floyd and his family uh, as they grieve, uh, and we uh, lift, lift them up. I wanted to share um, with you a prayer um, that I came across this week uh, that we uh, would offer here as we begin with our worship. Um, and so I invite you to join with me in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, your own mother looked on when your life ended in violence. Our hearts are pierced with grief and anger at the death of George Floyd. We commend him to your wounded hands and his loved ones to your merciful heart and our communities to your compassion and strength, trusting only in the promise that your love is stronger than death and that even now you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. We uh, have been beginning our worship services all through this season of Easter, which comes now to its culmination on the day of Pentecost by remembering our baptism. And um, I, the font has been moved uh, back to the entrance of our sanctuary, uh, but we continue to remember that power of water, uh, the waters of baptism that join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus. Uh, and so we... Uh, we hold on to that uh, and lift that up. And I'm going to use some different words uh, for our baptismal remembrance on this day of Pentecost. And so I invite you to join with me in remembering the gift of baptism. Blessed are you, holy God. You are the creator of the waters of the earth. You are the fire of rebirth. You poured out your spirit on your people Israel. You breathe life into our dry bones. Your Son, Jesus, promised to send the Spirit to us that the world may know your peace and truth. Pour out your Holy Spirit and breathe new life into your church. By your Spirit, adopt us all as your children through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We are going to join in a gathering song, uh, and I put uh, printed words to that, uh, posted them on the Faith Families group, so you can join in with that, or if you have a hymnal with you, it's hymn number 574 in our hymn books. Here I am, Lord.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit, that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is uh, one that will be familiar to anyone who's worshipped on the day of Pentecost before, uh, from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound, like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, yeah, I'm going to take a moment. <laughs> we did have a little technical difficulty, but um, I will get mic'd again. Thank you, Carl. Okay. So please uh, bear with us. We don't have with our live stream, remember that little thing that would show up on your TV screen where the camera guy would be sitting there? We need one of those. Okay. That's better. I'm just gonna hold this for now. All right, and we will continue now with our Psalm. Psalm from, an excerpt from Psalm 104. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, with its swarms too many to number, living things, both small and great. There go the ships, to and fro, 
and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth, and it trembles. You touch the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians 12. No one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given the, uh, through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the, by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning, everyone. The hymn we sang today, Here I Am, Lord, number 574 in our hymnal, is a, uh, is a hymn that's in the Catholic Church. It's probably considered one of the top ten or five favorites in the Catholic Church. The whole was taken. The hymn was written by a 31-year-old 31 31 -year Jesuit studying theology at Berkeley, California. Um, he had a friend that was being ordained on Saturday, and so his friend asked um, Dan Schutte if he would write something for his ordination mass that was happening on Saturday. So his friend asked him on a Wednesday. So in two days, Dan Schutte created this, uh, this hymn. The thing that makes this hymn unique is the verses are in the first, uh, first person from God's perspective. And then the refrains are still in the first person, but it's in, uh, in our perspective. Uh, God, uh, we want to serve. Him, our verse 3, I, I, the Lord of wind and flame, speaks to us today from Acts 2, 
uh, the day of Pentecost. The um, thing that uh, Dan Schutte, the composer of this hymn, was uh, born in 1947 in Nina, Wisconsin. So there's some Wisconsin ties, and even closer to us, he grew up at Elm Grove, Wisconsin. He went to uh, Marquette High School, and after graduation from college, he worked at uh, Marquette University as a director of liturgy. So, um, also, I remember when he, uh, when Dan Schutte was um, uh, in Milwaukee, he actually served at two parishes. One of them was Our Lady of Lourdes, which is on the south side. Uh, he's no longer in Wisconsin, I believe he's in California. But I have an, a piano arrangement of Here I Am, Lord. Please join with me in a word of prayer. Spirit of God, you brooded over the waters of chaos, and by your power, the word spoke, let there be light. Come to your creation, come to your world this day, come to your church. Breathe into us your life-giving breath 
Lord, where forces of hatred and division would choke off and divide and destroy, Lord, you breathe life, you breathe healing, you breathe reconciliation, you raise us up. Grant us courage and wisdom for this time. Lord, raise your church to testify together. Um, Lord, with all who are hurting, Lord, with all who are struggling, to testify to your love, to your power. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Let the church say, Amen. I want to refer back to uh, a little excerpt from that first reading from Acts of the Apostles um, after uh, the crowd had gathered. And the, the text tells us, amazed and astonished, they asked. Amazed and astonished, they asked. Of the many experiences that have shaped my identity, asking questions has been one of the most difficult. Some people just have a natural gift for this, to be able to ask questions and speak up and pose questions about things. But for some reason, it has always been a struggle for me. My parents could tell you about agonized conversations trying to convince me to ask my teachers for help in challenging classes. I wouldn't do it. Just was afraid to raise my hand. This pattern continued through college and even into my seminary training to become a pastor. I would dutifully take notes, read books, and absorb as much new knowledge as I could. But the step toward forming my own questions and framing them in conversation with others, raising my hand and speaking up in class, getting involved in the conversation, that remained intimidating for me. This isn't to say that I didn't have questions, but that they remained stuck within me. The most amazing ventures of learning begin when minds come together around a common problem to share their varied gifts, their varied perspectives, but we can't get anywhere if nobody speaks up. Recently, our congregation has been intentionally practicing this with others through something called faithful innovation. At its heart is the recognition that learning is a spiritual practice. Learning, asking questions, is a spiritual practice. The church hasn't always encouraged this. And I wonder how my own experiences within the tradition of the church and growing up in the church have contributed to my struggle with asking. You know, you're not supposed to raise your hand and ask too many questions. You're just supposed to learn and go along with the program. And yet, on this day of Pentecost, church, I am mindful that this great journey we are now traveling began at Pentecost with a shared experience of amazement and the perplexed asking of a question. My work as a pastor has introduced me to many faithful congregations filled with dutiful and devoted members. And when I think of the sacrifices and often unrecognized efforts of so many people, I'm humbled and deeply moved. And yet, I also have met many whose connection to these same congregations has been damaged over an inability to address the doubts and the difficult questions that they have posed. When there's something that doesn't quite go along with the program, we don't always know how to deal with that. I'm confronted with the irony of my own experience as a student hesitant to raise my hand or speak up in class, 
now being entrusted with the role of pastor and teacher in the church. Although I continue to value the great tradition that has been handed on to me, I also grieve the lost opportunities. And I'm haunted by the image of Jesus knocking at the doors of the church, doors that we so oftentimes refuse to open. The church has mostly taken its stand on the certainty and the security of its doctrines and its traditions. But today's readings testify to something very different. The church didn't begin with consensus around a particular set of beliefs or practices, but rather diverse and disconnected people who were surprised by a common experience of God. The word spirit derives from the words breath, air, or wind. It evokes something that we all need, but that we cannot control, a common experience in the midst of our vast diversity. We all need the breath of life. The reading from Acts described at great length the variety of languages and cultures that were represented that day, emphasizing that each one in all of their rich diversity, each one became a means of sharing the power of God. They didn't need to conform to a pre-existing tradition. The Spirit of God opened channels of communication, evoking questions, stirring things up, and eliciting astonishment. Not everyone was receptive. Some scoffed and dismissed it as nonsense. And yet a movement began, which continues to this day, which needs fresh expressions of this power in every generation. Sometimes questions are used to dismiss or to undermine, but church genuine curiosity and courage and compassion, note our synod's vision, words of our synod's vision, leading to honest collaboration with one another, that has the power to bring new life, reawakening us to the Spirit of God at work in our world. There are so many questions right now, rousing a bewildering array of emotions and responses within congregations, but even more importantly, in our communities and in our world. They are opportunities to connect with one another and to sort out what God is doing, what God has in store. Once again, the specter of white supremacy has revealed its ugliness in our common life the witness of our black and brown brothers and sisters is crying out with George Floyd and countless others, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Amid the impulse to turn away, to avoid, to justify, or to judge, the spirit of the living God is urging you to listen and to respond. There are powers at work in our communities to choke off this life-giving breath. But like the rush of a mighty wind, the Spirit of God is not stopped. That only happens when you close your ears and close your heart and turn away. Jesus entered the locked room where his disciples huddled in fear, and he greeted them with peace with shalom, with healing, and with courage. He showed them the scars of his own violence and betrayal. And he breathed into them the life-giving Spirit of God. God is meeting you in your questions, in the perplexity and the astonishment of this time, in the diverse members of the body, 
in the urgent needs of your neighbor, in the willingness to listen and learn together. The Lakota leader Sitting Bull once said, let us put our minds together and see what kind of life we can make for our children. God will meet you there. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God, we call on your spirit of unity, giving thanks for our different vocations. Open our eyes and our hearts to the diverse gifts present in your church and in your world, that they may reveal your love for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of life, present in air, wind, humidity, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy into all things. God, our world is struggling to breathe. Heal with your breath the whole creation, especially all who bear the diseases of COVID-19, air pollution, and systemic racism where violence and indifference choke off life, breathe compassion and courage to join in your work of healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we as a people are divided, unite us. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Give each one of us a heart for justice and empathy. We remember the witness of Ahmad Arbery, Brianna Taylor, Treshawn Reed, George Floyd, and so many whose blood cries out to you. Give us ears to hear their cries and hearts to work for a better future. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of healing. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers. Bless community activists, organizers, and relief workers. Bless public safety officers and emergency responders as they care for those in need. We pray for the city of Minneapolis and all places where violence and unrest prevail. Be with all who are hurting right now and long for comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of friendship. As Elizabeth welcomed Mary to her home, give us a spirit of welcome to those whom we meet each day. Surprise us daily with unexpected grace and help us to recognize every blessing that you send. We pray especially today for Rennie Rappold, Pat Verhalen, Jessica Struhar, John Zarling, Pat and Phil Dimmer, and for the inmates and staff at Felmer's Cheney Correctional Center. We pray for nurses, doctors, first responders, and EMT workers affiliated with our congregation, for Robin Bacon, Carol Christie, Jenny D'Angelo, Trisha Halberg, Jenny Wittenberg, Linda Nicole Staus, Amy Norquist, Alex Polum, Lynn Wagner, Brenda Brill, Jenny Findlay, and Miranda Vandaloo, Dan Hagerman, Boyd Miller, Will Bryan and Nathan Norquist, Eric Butler, Tom Schufs, the Zarling family, and Peter Pouts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for our high school graduates, Ryan, Olivia, Marshall, Sarah, and Heather. Fill them with your spirit as they take this step forward on their journeys to which you are calling them. 
Remind them each day of your steadfast love and work through them for the health and the well-being of our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of hope. As you have led your saints in all times and places, stir in us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death to new life in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. And so virtually we share a sign of peace with one another. Um, so peace. <laughs> peace, Carl. Peace, Steve. I like to use this um, offering time uh, to uh, give thanks and pray for the work that we share and for so many hands that are participating in it. Um, <laughs> Just this morning, there was a little uh, a gift for the, the worship team of some fresh baked cookies. Thank you, uh, giver of those cookies. We appreciate that. Um, and so many ways, I continue to be reminded of just that the church um, is made up of so many gifts and uh, so many ways that people are sharing together. Um, my family is thankful. We are vis they're visiting this weekend for um, to celebrate Olivia's graduation and for the ability to be able to um, use the church facilities with the space that's here um, to be able to safely meet together and see one another. Um, I, I thank you for that and for just uh, the many gifts that are at work here. God is working um, and we continue to rise to that occasion. And so we offer this prayer. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.